A private Robinson R-44 helicopter has crashed in Russia's Arkhangelsk Oblast, resulting in the deaths of two men, one of whom is believed to be Sergei Smetanin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Council from the United Russia Political Party. Latvia-based Russian media outlet Medusa and Russia Telegram channels reported this. Reports emerged on September 26 that a helicopter traveling from the village of Bich to the village of Karandashevskia had gone missing and contact with it had been lost. On the morning of September 27, Kremlin-aligned Russian news outlet TASS reported that the wreckage of the helicopter had been found, and the bodies of two people had been discovered at the crash site. A criminal case has been opened regarding the incident, with reports stating that the flight had not been authorized. Telegram channels close to law enforcement wrote on September 26 that Sergei Smetanin, a member of Arkhangelsk City Duma from the United Russia Political Party, and local businessman Alexei Semenov, the owner of the helicopter, were on board. Smetanin and Semenov, as reported, were flying to go on a fishing trip, Medusa summarized. After sanctions were imposed on Russia due to its bloody war against Ukraine, there has been an increase in aircraft accidents in Russia. This surge is attributed to a shortage of essential parts that Russia previously used to import from Western countries. Changes in Russia's nuclear doctrine are intended to discourage Ukraine's Western allies from supporting attacks on Russia, the Kremlin said Thursday. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said that the revisions in the document announced by President Vladimir Putin are a signal warning those countries about the consequences in case of their involvement in an attack on our countries with various assets, not necessarily nuclear ones. In a strong, new message to the West, Putin said Wednesday that any nation's conventional attack on Russia that is supported by a nuclear power will be considered a joint attack on his country. The threat, outlined in a revision of Moscow's nuclear doctrine, was clearly aimed at discouraging the West from allowing Ukraine to strike Russia with longer-range weapons and appears to significantly lower the threshold for the possible use of Russia's nuclear arsenal. Speaking during a meeting that discussed changes in the nuclear doctrine, Putin didn't specify whether the modified document envisages a nuclear response to such an attack, but he emphasized that Russia could use nuclear weapons in response to a conventional assault posing a critical threat to our sovereignty, a vague formulation that leaves broad room for interpretation. Russia is making slow but steady gains in Ukraine as the conflict grinds through its third year, and the Kremlin is seeking to discourage stronger Western support for Kiev. Putin emphasized that the revised doctrine spells out conditions for using nuclear weapons in greater detail, noting they could be used in case of a massive air attack. И ранее здравомыслящие э, главы государств, здравомыслящие политики, аналитики прекрасно понимают и понимали серьезность заявления президента Путина. Тем более, когда речь идет о таком, такой беспрецедентной конфронтации, спровоцированной прямым вовлечением э, западных стран, в том числе и ядерных держав, в конфликт вокруг Украины. Разумеется, происходит корректировка ядерного сдерживания с учетом тех элементов напряженности, которые складываются по периметру наших границ. Когда будет опубликовано, сейчас я вам не могу на это ответить. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with Equatorial Guinea's President Teodoro Obiang Gema in Moscow. Putin said Russia has been successfully cooperating with oil-rich Equatorial Guinea in the Gas Exporting Countries Forum and the OPEC+. Our common task, of course, is to stabilize world energy markets, Putin said. The two leaders will discuss bilateral ties as well as the current international and regional topics, the Kremlin said. Uh, 
друзья, еще раз всех вас приветствую в Москве. О своем выступлении стало заметной частью международной энергетической повестки. На это мероприятие ваша страна является нашим партнером и в организации производителей газа, экспортеров газа, и в ОПЕК+. плюс Мы сотрудничаем давно с Экватерной Гвинеей и успешно. Нашей общей задачей, безусловно, является стабилизация мировых энергетических рынков и в целом вместе с партнерами в рамках этих организаций нам удается эту задачу достаточно эффективно решать. Mi gobierno.